hope you're all doing well. And the video I have for you today is on one of my favorite practice techniques. And I call this offset two note slurs. This is a technique I use to draw attention to the level of connection between the notes and for working on smooth string crossings, connected tone, um, as well as the choreography of the left hand, placing fingers down earlier, like the tracks that the train is going to ride on. And you know we should be placing them before the train gets to that spot, right? So if we take um, an etude by Don't, for example, Now the challenge here is to play it super, super smooth and always string crossings and legato is, is very difficult. So you might find yourself playing something like this. Um, so if you notice my bow and my hand, uh, my left hand are synchronized, which is not good. They should be coordinated, but not synchronized. So it shouldn't be the case that the fingers are going down at the same time as the bow, and the bow shouldn't be kind of um, doing this staircase jagged uh, shape. What we want, of course, is... So you see there's one shape here. Okay, so how do we do this and what's the exercise? So the two note offset bowing is like this. The notes are almost kind of blending in with each other. One is bleeding into the next. You even hear double stops sometimes. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, but very crucially, uh, what I'm doing is repeating each note twice. And so what I get as a result is I'm practicing every connection between every note and its subsequent note, right? This one, then... And of course, some of those are on one string, but many of them will be string crossings. So you basically get to do all the string crossings on a legato without, you know, many notes per bow. And this is superior to just doing, you know, two notes per bow or even two notes with one separate. Which is an excellent exercise, but it doesn't really get to the heart of the string crossing. So watch how I'm setting a course for my bow that the bow is working like an arc. I'm not, I'm not articulating the string crossings. And with this bowing, I'm able, able to do it one at a time. You see that? So this, as opposed to double stops. So the feeling is like buttering bread. Um, you would do it in a sort of an arc pattern, right? You wouldn't let the weight of the bow go, or of the knife rather, you wouldn't let it go kind of in the center of your toast, right? You would complete the stroke and it would be a, a sort of follow through. Importantly, the weight wouldn't be lifted. So what we're doing is we're creating one shape and we're not lifting the weight. So it's like this feeling that you're carving something. So the image of buttering bread or the image of carving, I find, works the best. So as I said, this gets really useful when the transition between the notes becomes ambiguous and you get that double stop. More specifically, the double stop appears and then it fades away. So you're starting on one string and you're ending on one string for one bow, right? Mm -hmm. 
So I started on the B, I ended on the D sharp. And somewhere in between, there was the B, D sharp, double stop. So let's look at a couple of examples. Um, this one is an introduction, but of course it needs no introduction. So part of the challenge of this passage is, of course, the legato. These string crossings. So we could practice it with the two slurred offset bowing. So you notice that every, every chance I can do a double stop, I'm doing a double stop. So what you're doing is really sensitizing your arm, so creating a map of that legato line, of that particular piece. And every single bow that has you know, multiple notes on it, it's like a path on a map, right? And the path can be like this, and then take a little turn, you continue that way, or this way. And that's, that's what your bow is doing. Otherwise, you get this kind of thing, where you're just keeping up and making the string crossings at the last second. Now, the other example I have is from Brahms, and this is kind of a magic moment from his first sonata, and it's uh, the point in the first movement when the theme returns. So it goes like this. So we have all these string crossings that aren't even in, in one sort of arc. It's like that path that I was talking about. And I like to play a lot of this in first position because I think it has this beautiful sort of sparkle. Um, and the sonata is called Regenlied. Um, so the idea of kind of raindrops and the fact that raindrops are, have a random quality to them. So I feel like all these string crossings, if they're executed correctly and smoothly, you get that texture of different strings coming um, in a seemingly random way. So I'd practice it like this. So you see I'm trying to carve each one of those string crossings. So see how this helps you in your practice and um, if you're paying really close attention um, both with your ears and with your eyes you should be watching your arm either like this or in the mirror. If you do that, you can really sensitize your, uh, your hearing and kind of demand more. You'll be able to hear things in higher resolution, like what's between the notes, right? The, the magic of music is, is between the notes. Whether we're dealing with Bach, Beethoven, or Indian classical music, you know, the whole, um, the whole world of music, I think, is obsessed with what's between the notes, and there's a reason for that. So this is just one little technique uh, that will uh, help us achieve the impossible, the perfect connection. So I hope it works for you, and I hope you're well, and I'll see you next time.